Hey guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Karen and welcome to Our Irish Family. So today I want to discuss a topic that came up during my chatty vlog the other day um, and that basically that chatty vlog is where I just sit down with a cuppa and I discuss some of the topics that people want me to talk about. There was Halloween, how I met Robert, um, being an atheist in Ireland, that sort of stuff. Um, and then there was mention of um, how I um, let me just get the my the my I can't speak today um I just want to pull up the exact way that the person worded the um <clears throat> what they wanted me to talk about um where is it here let's see it says I would like to to how I maintain mental health as a stay-at-home mom since we all know being a mom is not easy both mentally and physically um, so that's what today's video is going to be about how I maintain my mental health and how I deal with issues when they pop up and crop up and all that sort of stuff um, so basically I have been a mother since 2016 um, and so for three and a half years now I've been a stay-at-home mom but before that before that, the year before that, I worked for a year. Um, so I worked from February. Um, okay, I'll give you my, my kind of working history. So I've always had a job since I think I was like 15, 16. I worked part time. Um, and then when I left school, I got a, I wanted to be a beautician. Um, so I was attending like a beauty school, but then I worked part time in a store here called Dunn Stores. Um, and I worked part-time there then I moved um, after two or three years I moved to a different store um, and then in 2007 I moved to a job in an office I worked in human resources and um, because I had done a payroll course so I was kind of like their human resource human resources assistant I was mainly doing like their the attendance and the payroll and all that sort of stuff um, and then I worked there for five years until 2013 um, and I'm very maybe very late 2012 yeah, I think it was November 2012 I took redundancy because at that time the recession in Ireland everybody was losing their jobs um, and companies were going bust and this particular um, place that I worked for was an American um, company and I took the redundancy I got a redundancy package Robert had also his his the place where he worked went had gone into administration and um, so we had decided we are going to go and travel the world we both have some money at the moment he got a little bit of redundancy um, and I got a better redundancy package from my um, employer so um, we decided we were going to travel the world and that's what we did for a, a number of months we went basically around Southeast Asia um, and then we went to Australia we went to Melbourne and um, after that we came home Robert got a job I didn't have a job um, and I didn't have a job for 18 19 20 months maybe and at that stage I lived we lived with Robert's parents um, for the majority of that time then I got a job in 2015 for a year it was a year contract from February 2015 to February 2016 and in that time I got pregnant um, and then so I was there until three weeks before I gave birth it was the very end of February and then I gave birth on the 22nd um, of March um, and then since then I haven't have, had a job in the sense of I go to, oh I, that's a lie, when Ava was six months old I did get a job um, as like an accounts assistant um, administrator for the office, office administrator and I was there for three months and I left, I quit because that was the worst job I've ever had in my whole entire life. Um, how that person was in business, how that person, it was the worst time of my whole entire life. I don't think, for one thing, I don't think I was ready to go back to work. Ava was six months old. No, yes, she was six months, just coming off the six months old. I don't think I was ready to go back to work. Um, 
been the first issue and the second issue was the person that I worked for it was a really small company there was only five of us and the person that I worked for was god awful and that company is now closed down I think it was repossessed by like revenue or something it was awful awful anyways so that was just me blabbing for five minutes about how I worked okay so being then as you know then now I'm a stay-at-home mom so I made this channel in 2013 to follow my journey of trying to conceive and then obviously when I had Ava I was kind of stuck in a conundrum didn't know what to do and on some advice from um, Style Mom XO um, she said you know why don't you do cleaning and you know follow your life as a mom just show us what you do day to day as a new mom and all that sort of stuff so that's where it kind of came to and now it's come on to this where I kind of still do the same things as I did three years ago um, but it's just a little bit better maybe I don't know maybe I'm just more open to share and stuff now um so my mental health as a mum when I had a very traumatic labor and birth with Ava um the first five six days of her life were very traumatic for me it was kind of like a black haze but not a black haze because I can remember pretty much in detail every single thing that happened um but it's just kind of something that you block out your mind just blocks out you know um the very first time i um that uh, from what i can recall in my life that i had any sort of anxiety or like panic attack was when we were bringing Ava home from the hospital um, I was in the back with her and Robert said we'll be stopping McDonald's on the Long Royal Road and we'll get something to eat because you're probably starving I said yeah I, I only had a slice of toast for breakfast this morning let's stop at McDonald's so he went through the he said do you want to go in with her and I said no sure she's only like a couple of months old and she just got out of like ne uh, the neonatal unit and all that sort of stuff so and skaboo and I was like no We'll, I'll eat here really in the car park so we, he went to the drive to and as he was paying the person in the window I was like feeling so sick now that that morning that I knew that I was getting out of hospital I felt extremely sick in my stomach you know um, and I was feeling really sick in the back of the car and he handed me my, my McDonald's and I was like I can't eat that I'm gonna get sick everywhere I feel awful and then I had this like panic attack in the back of the car that I didn't know what was happening to me in the moment but now on reflection I do know what it was and I was just remember thinking like oh, like we can't be here like we'll have to bring her back is this really my baby like I'm still not really sure if this is my baby um <laughs> she could be anybody's baby um you know they like they just let you out of hospital and you did like you don't know what to do and like all this are all these thoughts were coming into my head and I was freaking out um and then you know eventually Robert's like okay I'm just going to drive home and we'll deal with this when we get home you'll be fine we get a cup of tea when we get home it'll all be fine so when we got home I was very aware that I wanted people to see the baby so like we rang up um Robert's side of the family because none of them had seen them where my mom dad and sister had come over to the hospital when I was there and they got a glimpse of Ava in the neonatal um but they had seen me since I gave birth and so Robert's um brother and his girlfriend came first and they were our couch used to be here and they came and you know they were doing whatever then like all the rest of the family came and everyone was fine Ava was being passed around or she was asleep in the little um the little cot that we had for her and then Robert's mom's like how are you feeling Karen I was like oh I feel grand yeah like I feel good and just really tired you know and my stitches and because I had a c-section and blah 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 and, uh, and then she's like you know it's okay to cry because people get baby blues and it's okay to cry and I remember the minute she said to me it's okay to cry I just broke down sobbing crying and then she's like, okay, let's just go into the bedroom. Because, you know, everybody was just staring at me like, what just happened? Because I was like laughing and joking and then I was just crying. Um, so they, I went into her bedroom and she sat down beside me. She's like, what's wrong? And I said, look, okay, I, I, like, I just feel bad because of the way she came in and how I reacted to her um, when I first saw her. And, you know, it, the birth didn't go as I wanted. And there was this whole big thing about how everything didn't go as how I planned it like I had a plan and it didn't go to plan and it all went to shit and all this sort of stuff and I cried and cried and cried and then she called Robert in and Robert was like look I'm really upset too because you know I, it was happening to you but I had to watch it happening and all this sort of stuff and 
it was grand after a while like we hoped it out whatever she left the two of us in there we had a chat and it was all grand and um that's fine so the days went on and I, like while now on reflection looking back um i um i i didn't have much interaction with ava i was just you know doing what i was supposed to do feeding her changing her nappy but i didn't have any emotional connection with her robert was the one who was you know comforting her when she was crying and all this sort of stuff and i remember one day we went for dinner and she was just bawling crying and we forgot a bottle because i was trying to pump and feed her because she wouldn't latch and I remember just like grabbing her off the person that was holding her and I was like, this is my baby, like get away from her. And uh, you know, I was trying to comfort her and I was like giving out, Robert had gone home this time to get the bottle and um, because we'd left the breast milk bottle in the fridge and uh, he'd gone home and I was just standing there giving out to the two people who were sitting in front of me and they were just like got up and walked away. And um, you know, then, then I was fine. Robert went back to work and that was really a kick in the arse that I needed. Um, I know it can go bad, worse for some people. They kind of go in the opposite in postnatal depression. Um, but my, my, my haze kind of lifted and I kind of was like, okay, I have to do this myself. I have to care for her. I have to be the emotional support. Now I didn't let her out of my sight at all. Like my mom had to come here and she literally had to take her for 10 minutes and I was ringing her on the 10th minute saying, you should be home now, like come home. Um, and you know, and eventually it kind of stopped and like, you know, I obviously let her go wherever she wants to go now with whoever she wants to go with for however amount of time. But for those first good like four months or so, um, that was where my, my thing lay is like, I needed her beside me all of the time. Um, and I didn't like if somebody put her somewhere. In fact, now if she sleeps in like Robert's parents' house, I still feel physically sick for a good half an hour after we leave her there. Um, not because I think anything bad is gonna happen to her, but it's kind of like a little bit of separation anxiety, I think. Um, and generally overall my mental health is pretty good i think um because i i focus a lot on youtube and now i have my etsy store which i'm trying to build up and with the youtube or this youtube here our irish, our irish family and i also have my um youtube the budget one karen's budget and plan and that just keeps my mind focused on other things other than ava i will say that as a person, I'm very quick to get angry. Um, I definitely would have, I'd be very snappy to get angry. Like all you have to do, I let build, like things kind of build up and simmer for a while. And then all of a sudden, all you would have had to do was drop something on the ground and I'd get pretty angry about it. Like, like not lash out or anything like that, but kind of just get like really annoyed that you just drop that on the ground. And it's not because the person dropped something on the ground. It's because I've been letting stuff fester for a while. Um, but then once that kind of little outburst, which is about last for about five minutes, I'd say, um, happens, and it's not like attacking anybody. Like I'm not attacking like anybody's person. I'm just like, why did you drop it on the ground? What did that happen? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and I am trying to get better at that. I do, ha that happens way less than it used to. Um, but it is still something that I am aware that is happening. That is something that I want to work on. But it, that's, I think I've always been like that. I've always been really quick to get angry about things. Um, and yeah like generally I think focusing on my YouTube or focusing on yeah it's my YouTube and my Etsy that's really helped me kind of take switch my mind off mammy stuff and then turn on to this this YouTube blog Etsy um, and it really just helps because it's kind of like I'm going to work and I kind of treat it nowadays like this past like six months or so um, I've been treating it like it is my work. Um, so this is me going to work. This is my work area. Um, I even say to Ava, like, no, mommy has to work now for one minute. Just like, give me a second. You just do whatever I had set up for her to do while I was doing it. And then I'd get like, like upload my video or edit the video or whatever it is. And um, while Ava is at school, I treat this as work. It's those three hours are work hours. 
and um, so that really helps me that way now I know that not everybody has a task like YouTube or Etsy but if there is something that you enjoy doing and if you if there is something that you enjoy doing set a, set yourself aside time for it it's really hard it's really easy for me because I have one child if I have two children it would be so much harder obviously because if I had a child younger than Ava they'll be here with me and I won't be able to do that maybe during nap time I could do something um but you know it is really hard and I can only talk about my own experience and how I do it because I don't have the experience of having more than one child um so for me just having this time for myself and having my own little project to kind of build and grow on and all that sort of stuff really does help also something that helps is in those moments where I find that I'm getting angry um instead of actually like having a big outburst at Robert or Ava or whoever it is I'm at I try to just kind of walk away from the situation so as a person in general I do kind of like my own I like my own space and I like to just be with myself and um, I like quiet and I, I, I need that quiet time so I would like if Robert comes home after work and it's been a particularly kind of like gritty day with Ava um, I would just kind of have dinner and he'd know by me that I'm not in the best of moods um, and I just go into our room for like 10-15 minutes just to and I read a book usually on my phone because I have Kindle Unlimited on my phone um, read a book and just kind of zone out and just you know reel myself back in reel my emotions back in um, so that is another way if that is something that you can do is just find a space for 15-20 minutes and just kind of do something that takes your mind off the reason why um, you are so angry um, if like me you're angry if that works or over like if you're over emotional or if you're just overwhelmed I just find that if you go somewhere quite ter than the room that your kids or your husband or your partner or whoever is in um, and you can just spend 15-20 minutes even if it is just the bathroom and just either like scroll through social media maybe that might not be a good one but um you know look up Pinterest or something or like read a book on your phone Kindle Unlimited as I said is really really good um or listen to an audiobook or turn on some music and just kind of have it on low and just kind of you know just think about what's happening in your book or what's happening in your music that really helps me um, and then something that I always do um, is keep away from news so this might sound like a, a strange one but I find that when I listen to the, to the news on the radio or look at the news on the TV or look at news on Facebook if I see something on Facebook that is like news related once per day I look at the news okay and it's usually at night time is when I look at the news like in the evening time after Ava goes to bed I kind of scroll through what's happening on Twitter when the news app in the news section or scroll through Facebook and if there is stuff that's news related I might click on the article just to see what it is but in general oops sorry in general I keep away from the news I keep away from anything that's kind of real life I like to live in a little bubble where you know things around me aren't happening is that the right way to go about life probably not it's probably better to be more aware of what is happening but I find that I like to live in my little bubble where there isn't everything that's bad in the world isn't happening until the 10-15 minutes I give myself in the evening time to figure out what is actually happening in the world just so I do know what's happening in the world and it's mainly I read the headlines um, and if anything is a little bit interesting I click into it um, but in general I keep away from that sort of stuff because I know that if there is stuff about like homelessness or there's stuff about kids doing things or if there's stuff about all that sort of thing um, I will get sucked into it and it will definitely affect my mood I will think about it and fester on it and um, so I've learned that not to do that just keep away from that sort of stuff sometimes people come like say to me like oh isn't that terrible about the woman now blah 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 blah, blah happened there and I'm like standing there going I like I don't know like that is terrible like the story you told me is actually terrible but I don't know actually anything about it because I don't look at the news <laughs> I don't read the news 
and like that is for me how I help to maintain it again people get sucked in on Facebook and Instagram with these you see these pictures and I kind of do as well these people always on holidays have new cars um, have this sort of stuff and then we're here living as a one income family now it's by choice that we're a one income family we're choosing for me not to get a job um, and you know so this is all my choice that we are only living on one income we could have these things too if I had a job um, but right now what I'm choosing to do is stay at home with Ava um, and you know do stuff with her and also try and grow my Etsy my YouTube and my blog and that is what I want to do and Robert is gracious enough to be the only income earner and like go to work for 11 hours a day and work his arse off to you know provide for our family um, and I'm really really grateful that he does that um, because if not I probably wouldn't be talking here with you guys um, so that is kind of in a roundabout way I went off on my tangents as always um, how I deal with mental health it's a lot of avoidance um, and you know that probably if you're like a psychologist or, or like a counsellor or something that's probably not the best way of dealing with it but for me that's perfect way for me to do it because it just it helps me so much to not allow my brain to fester on stuff that doesn't directly involve me you know um so that's it guys if you have a way of coping with your um situations or if you have a way of how to maintain your mental health i know a lot of people do meditation and yoga and that they are really great techniques um, but let me know down in the comments how you would deal with your mental health or if you have um, ever experienced like a, like health mental oh my god mental health related issues and you're willing to share you know the comments is a great place for that um, the people down in my comments are really kind um, and if they're not I delete them <laughs> Um, so I blocked them so they can't comment on any videos anymore and um, because that's I just found that that's the easiest way to do it oh that's another thing because also sometimes people do leave awful comments on my YouTube in fact uh, last Saturday I had six comments in a row commenting on my appearance commenting on my spots commenting on my weight how I should wear makeup and the actual hack of me <laughs> um, and you know like I could let them that you know harbor and fester in my head and become something but all I did was literally go in block that person's profile so they can't comment on any channel and then just delete that comment and that for me is how I deal with that Um, so that's it guys as I said if you have anything you want to discuss please do leave it down in the comments Um, I will have the labor the birth and delivery story linked in the comments alongside anything else I mentioned um, at the start of this video so um, if that is something you're interested in and you haven't heard about my labor and birth story before um, that will be linked in the description for you thank you so much for watching today and um, yeah I hope you enjoyed today's video please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you are new don't forget to hit the little bell button because it lets you know every time I upload a new video and I'll talk to you in the next one bye bye